Can we all just admit that Haramine is just amazing? She's such a good character in Citrus, and almost every scene that she's in is usually one of my favorite scenes of the episode. I mean, I like I like the Yuri stuff, don't get me wrong, but just Haramine, she's such a good character, and it makes me kind of feel upset that I know for a fact that Haramine's probably never going to get with Yuzu, because we know for a fact when it comes to romance series, usually it's the MC with the main female character that's gotten introduced, the main love interest, which would be May. so it's just common sense that those two characters are going to end up together, and Haramine and Yuzu is just never going to happen. Now, if it did happen... I would be very shocked, color me surprised if that happened, but I will say right now, it's not going to happen most likely, and it just makes me a little bit sad, because Hardamine is such a good character, she, she's just such a fantastic character, I love the head pats she gives to Yuzu, I love her interactions, the bike scene, all of that throughout this episode, it's just truly cute, adorable, and I just can't help but say I want more of her, and I do hope that she ends up happy before this series is said and done, because... I've seen enough, I've seen enough romance series, especially stuff like this, to where usually a character like Hardamine, she probably is developing feel feelings for Yuzu, and she's probably going to get shafted, like into Yard and all that, and I just, I hope that's not done, I, I really hope that is not what's going to happen to Hardamine before the series is over, but ending it off there, let's talk about the main part of this episode, which is daddy issues, so May. We know for a fact, or for a while now, she has had some issues with her father. She has not been able to properly talk to him, even though she has gotten letters from him. She hasn't opened them up, she hasn't really sent him any letters, she hasn't really communicated it at all for many, many years, and so she has daddy issues, and it's kind of what drove her to act like she is, why she seems like such a loner, why she seems very depressing or just cold and all that, because of whatever happened in her past, which was with her father. And we get a little bit of clarification exactly what happened in this episode. Pretty much, at one point in her time, the father, he always sacrificed his own well-being, his happiness, and all of that for the sake of the academy, the school. For instance, he put his job in front of everything else, like before everything else. So that's what he cared about. He cared about his job and family, everything else, his own personal life, what he loved to do or whatever, was thrown to the side just for he can get his job done. And so that is the big part about his character in the past. And May used to look up to this and think he was a really cool dude. He was strict, he was her sensei, but she looked up to him because he was someone that always you know, did work like that, and eventually, he decided he was just done, he wasn't happy anymore, and he was just done, and so he decided to, you know, seek out what he wanted to do, the life he wanted, and eventually, he left May behind, now, you could say in that moment, he was a very irresponsible father, and he was, he, he shouldn't have left his little girl like that behind when she needed a father figure in her life, but at the same time, though, the man made a decision for himself, he realized the life he was living, how he was living his life, he wasn't happy, and so he needed to be done with it, and so he left. Now, I do say, besides him being irresponsible, we get to see how this traumatized May as a person, you know, as a little girl. She found out, like, or she didn't understand why her father acted like that, because her entire life, she's always used to how her father was, you know, being very strict, you know, working for the academy. She didn't understand why he would just up and leave like that, and so all her life, for those many, many years since he was gone, she decided to take it upon herself to hold the seat, you know, hold the academy up for when the father finally returns. When her father finally returns, he could take the spot and be back in position like nothing ever happened. So she was always living her life for someone else, her father instead of her own self. So she was never doing anything, never seeking out her own objectives, ideals, anything she wanted for her own self. She only did it for her father, so she lived a very sad and depressing life. That's what you could take from that, the context of that scene. And so, this explains why she acts like she does. Well, in this episode, finally, that big conflict was concluded. May finally settles the issues with her father, gets to sit down, or not sit down, stand and talk to him at the train station and discuss her problems of whatever happened. Now, we don't actually get to hear 
exactly what happened and what was said between the two. We don't know what words were exchanged. It wasn't clarified. We just know they talked for a little bit. And from what we can assume, maybe the conversation was around like maybe five to ten minutes long, maybe shorter than that. Who knows? But they talked for a little bit, and eventually it seemed like everything worked out. And, you know, the father had to go on his business trip. And then, you know, May continued to say like, you know what? I want to live my life for what I want to live. I want to, you know, watch over the academy, but for my own reasons instead of for my father. So she is finally going down the path she wants to take with her own ideals and all that. So it shows progression in her character. However, there is a big thing about this that kind of bugs me, okay? A big thing that bugs me is the fact that the entire situation with May's conflict and whatever happened in her early childhood, it was all settled with just a 5 to 10 minute conversation. And I thought that was, a. Uh, Okay, I, I, I hope it's not just me, but it felt too easy, okay? Like, look, when you have something like that that has changed your life that much, that, that has impacted you so much to act like you are, that's basically changed your very person for many, many years, you don't just get rid of that in just a 5-10 to 10 minute conversation. That just doesn't change. It doesn't disappear, okay? And so seeing that scene, I'm like, you telling me, all of the stuff that May has been through and what how she's been acting throughout the beginning of the series to this very point, it just basically all went away after one simple little conversation. So you're telling me little talk, communication with her father settled everything. Really? Just like, I felt like that was too easy. There, there should have been a little bit more there, a little bit more clarification or a little bit more difficulty to kind of conclude that, but... I just felt that was very weird. It could have been handled a little bit better than it was. It felt a little bit sloppy in my opinion, but that's just my personal preference on that. Now, talking about the uh, the final convo of this episode, the final scene, you see where Mei and Yuzu, they actually have a kiss. Now, this kiss, obviously, we've already seen quite a few from the show, but this is the first time we've actually seen a kiss have this type of meaning, and that meaning is consent like it, it, it's consent like the uh they weren't forcing each other on to each other like you know you didn't have yuzu forcefully kissing may or may forcefully kissing yuzu they both consented to a kiss and they both kissed at the end of the episode so it was a very different meaning and i'm like yo th this is progression you know it's actually happening and may is now taking a different path down her life so this is a really good change it's like the end of may's character arc that's what this episode was for ending may's character arc and allowing her to change who she is and go after what she seeks. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to this episode of Citrus. Was it a good episode? It was enjoyable, but it did have its problems. The big problem I personally had with it was the, how the whole situation was with the father was handled. I felt like it just felt too easy. It, it felt too easy. It, there should have been a little bit more conflict there because of just how many years it built up for May as a person. It should not have been like 5 to 10 minute combo that could settle something like that. But like I said, that's my personal preference. So with that, I want to end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below next to the subscribe button. So please be safe, stay healthy, stay warm. Chibi out.